Hey Can Do It's Ricks here. I'm going to be starting on this new drawing, but first I think I need to give you a little bit of the backstory. So let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> See that? I'm starting over. Yep, that was pretty rough. As you can see I have already done my initial sketch here and so I'm going to go right into the shading portion and like I always do I like to start more around the eye area so I'm going to do that again here when it comes to the eye I usually start with the dark areas the dark lines the iris and so forth so I'm trying to pick out some charcoal pencils here to figure out which one I want to use. And, you know, any charcoal pencil is going to produce the darks that we're looking for. Okay, so I'm starting off with my Primo Elite Grande number 5000 charcoal pencil. But seriously, folks, any soft, dark charcoal pencil is going to work. I just know that some of you'd like to know exactly what pencil I'm using. So there you go. Uh, it, it's so short that I've put it on an extension. Um, I had to shave the sides of it because the barrel was a little bit too big for my extension. Now what I'm doing here is really out of character for me. I mean seriously, I think I'm losing my mind. Because normally when I start a portrait drawing, the usually the first thing I do is I go straight to the iris and I will darken that round thing up and start getting the highlights in there and then I'll start worrying about all the outlines but for some reason I, I don't know maybe there was a sun flare or something it affected my you know brain I don't know what it is but uh, I just started on the top of the eye so this is a little out of character but hey you know you do what you want and in this case I just went with it but anyway so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and use this dark pencil and draw the areas that I see that are dark on the original photo. Okay, so we could leave this on real time, but let me just give you an advanced warning. This video would be really long because I take my ever living sweet time with this. I mean... I just take all the time in the world and I can start seeing all of you just start passing out from boredom. So at this point, I'm going to speed things up a little bit. Do forgive me if uh, that does irk you a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to use the paper blender and the kneaded eraser here to just blend out the dark that I did with the soft charcoal uh, as you go away from the dark creases of the inner upper lid there. And yes, I am actually using a kneaded eraser to act like a blender as well. Okay, now I'm going to use the dark charcoal pencil to uh, put some of the dark back in. And then when you blend, I'm going to blend from the dark outwards. And that tends to lighten the dark area. So I'll have to go back and forth. I'll add more dark charcoal. I'll blend it out. I'll add more dark charcoal. I'll blend it out. And that just gives it kind of a gradient look. And that's what you want, which gives it a 3D rounding of the eyebrow area just above the eye socket there. So I'm going to have to go back and forth until I just get the right gradient that I'm looking for and of course the trusty old q-tip or cotton swab wherever you happen to live in the world and uh, that's commonly used to just push graphite and charcoal around and I'm just kind of wanting to get some tone here you know just kind of get things going you know what I mean so I'm just kind of shaping things with the q-tip 
Okay, so finally I'm going to the iris and the pupil. Oh, I tell you, I don't know what's with me today. But anyway, uh, this is where I usually start, but uh, hey, better late than never. You know, let's just roll with it. You should know that I'm not just merely tracing, but I am just isolating the areas that is going to be solid black. And so I can outline the solid black locations and then just darken that in. And that's what I'm basically doing here. But I wouldn't do this for, for every uh, you know single trace line that I have unless it's going to be solid black and so that's what I'm doing see here we go time to darken in the areas that I just outlined in dark charcoal black charcoal all right just starting to fill it in Here I'm using the General's Extra Hard Charcoal Pencil, 2H, and the reason for this is because it gives you much sharper lines. It also allows you to go a little bit lighter than the soft charcoal does, and so I can get in there with the fine details, go in there with a slightly lighter shade, but mostly it's a, it allows me to refine the details, the lines, to make the edges sharper because soft charcoal tends to be a little bit soft on the edges uh, because of how soft it is. So using the extra hard pencil makes it really uh, easier to get in the details and to really sharpen the lines when you really need it. Now here I'm using the paper blender because it allows me to push the charcoal around and you know make a lighter shade, but it's usually something I'll use for gradients uh, to transition from darker 
to lighter to lighter to lighter so uh, that's what's really good with the paper blender sometimes when you have little stubborn areas where you want highlights I'll use an electric eraser like I am doing here see first I cleaned up with the electric eraser and now I'm, I want to get those lines really sharp and tight around the highlights uh, especially in the eye you know you you want that really crisp division between the highlight and the very dark area because it makes it really pop well as you can see here the eye is really coming along of course we're still a long ways from finishing this puppy here I'm doing a little lighting up with the kneaded eraser a little touch up and then right back with that extra hard charcoal pencil to get those details in notice here that instead of using a pencil to start darkening in the whites of the eyes I'm actually drawing material from what I've already added from the very dark area and pushing it with a q-tip into the white of the eyes and remember the white of the eyes are never white you can see in the photo it's very very gray matter of fact it's it's quite a dark gray so never leave this area white. The only thing you want white is the sparkle in the eye. Now that I've toned down the white of the eye, I'm using that extra hard charcoal pencil to get some of that detail in, in the more darker areas closer to the tear duct and then just kind of push it out a little bit. But uh, right now, once I have already laid down that dark darkness of the white of the eye, in other words, shaded it down, I'm still going to have to pull out gradients. In other words, I'm going to have to lighten it from where it's closer to the iris and allow it then to just get mildly darker as it goes to the outside of the eyes. So we're nowhere near done with the white of the eyes right now, but I'm just bouncing around. Now this is standard procedure for me. I will lay down some material, whether it's graphite or charcoal, and then I will pull some of it out. I'll add some more and pull some of it out. And if you look, I'm going for the details of every little shade changes that is found in the white of the eye here. And, uh, you, you know, a lot of times you, you got to go back and forth, especially if the surrounding area hasn't been done yet. And uh, as you put the surrounding area in, you start to find out that you were a little too dark or a little too light. And so this is just kind of a back and forth thing. Pretty standard. What I'm trying to achieve here is to get a little more tone in the white of the eye in the 2H pencil to make it a little bit smoother and less grainy and I'll be able to easily pull out uh, the lighter areas and so forth later on with the kneaded eraser but I find that uh, using a hard pencil like the 2H will allow me to kind of fill in some of the rough spots and uh, you know er everything here is just kind of testing to see well how is this going to work does this look like it's going to work good no or yes and, and so you know it's not like I have a plan before I even start and says well this is what I'm going to use this for and then I'm going to use a 2H for this and I'm going to use a 6B for that no I go as I as I go along I make these decisions on the fly and if I put it on and after about two three seconds I go mm, I don't like that well then I'm going to back off and, and I'm going to use something else I'll take off what I put on if, if necessary or I'll blend it in and so you know everything that every time I do a new portrait it's it's almost like a, a whole new journey it's uh, only so many things like the basic skills are, are regular 
but everything else is well this is a new challenge how do you do this well how might I try this let me see if I can do this texture or that texture or whatever so here I'm using the kneaded eraser because I need to highlight certain tones in the dark area you know you have those veins in the white of the eyes and so forth and so uh, you don't just have a plain light gray area around the iris you have variations of tone and uh, to make it look like a real life eyeball you need to make sure that you put in all those little tiny details and if this thing wasn't sped up 400 times speed you can see how long I'm taking to do this and uh, it does take quite a while so you need to have patience Now see what I'm doing here I'm now lightening around the iris after I had just darkened it with the 2h pencil and it comes off really easy as you can see and so here I'm, I'm starting to lighten up areas and leaving the rest of it alone and this is a back-and-forth thing Doesn't that look eerie to have five eyeballs staring straight at you? <laughs> All right. Skipping over here to this time frame here. Uh, I'm starting to do a little bit of detail work on the outside of the eye. Okay, so a little bit on the bottom lashes and so forth. Let's see how that goes. Again, notice I'm using the extra hard charcoal pencil because of details such things as eyelashes where you don't want them too thick you want them as thin as possible and using a, a soft charcoal pencil can be really tricky uh, you'll have to come in and thin it out with your eraser uh, oftentimes but using the extra hard and with a good point on it allows you to do that and some other little details here, creases in the skin and so forth. I'll use the extra hard perhaps for that. And then when I blend uh, the uh, graphite or charcoal over the skin, it will lighten those areas up. So don't worry about the dark line underneath or anywhere else in this stage. Because if there's nothing down there, that means I'm going to put something down there, some tone on the skin. And that in itself is going to lighten everything that's already on there. And as you can see, I'm, I'm doing fine little hairs and fine little lines and everything using this extra hard charcoal pencil. starting to look pretty good though I'm, I'm noticing here there's a difference in the slope in the upper eyelid and so forth and uh, looking at it from a distance and so I'll be correcting that as we go later on but right now uh, I'm just trying to get that nice glow off the eyeball that real realistic wetness look and so I'm just as I said before uh, I'm taking a little off adding a little on and therefore achieving a realistic eyeball rather than just having a flat tone gray or a flat tone white or whatever the case may be. Now here I'm taking a medium charcoal pencil and adding some more dark material on the upper eyelid because when I do that then I can use one of the blenders and push that dark charcoal up and over in the eyebrow area and then this will give it a more 3d uh, look as if rather than just being flat because it's not uh, it will actually give it a rounded look and as you can see I'm now doing that using the q-tip as my blender of choice for the moment now remember anytime that you blend using the material in your darkest areas 
those dark areas then become lighter. So in this case here, I have to restore that real darkness by coming back with my soft charcoal pencil and adding more material. So every time I blend from this dark area outward, I've got to add more of that material back in if I want that really dark crevice look uh, to give it that nice uh, change from very dark to coming out into the light. So you'll see me doing this over and over again. See how I'm using the paper blender to move that dark material out and, and away from the eye to, to give that gradient, that change of tone from very dark to lighter, to lighter, to lighter. See what I'm doing again? I'm adding more dark material because I blended it out and it got uh, lighter. So every time I do this, I've got to come back in there and I've got to add more material. So that is one of the things I learned early on was when I use my blenders, I use the neighboring material to push that around and then I add more material to that location so that uh, it makes the gradient, uh, well, very even. Okay, let's jump forward a little bit as you can see I'm pushing material around to the underside of the eye now and I want to get a little bit of tone happening here because it helps me to get the correct tone levels inside the eye itself as long as the outside area is white it makes it a little more complicated uh, and so there's just a lot of adjusting now here I'm using what I believe is a 10 B uh, woodless graphite pencil and I really like woodless graphite pencils because they tend to uh, they, they seem to be darker and richer uh, in graphite tone than just your standard drawing pencils and I use this to make that very dark desert man portrait which I'll show you right here that skin tone that you see there was done with woodless graphite pencils. So I figured, you know, why don't I go ahead and use a little bit of this on her skin and smooth it out and see what kind of effect I would get. And it actually came out quite nice. The only thing that I later on kind of regretted was it, it did make my charcoal pencils that I put on top of it slide a little bit more than I like. So uh, just be mindful of that. Okay, I know you guys are going to ask me this and uh, I got to tell you this is not scotch tape. This tape is a re reusable tape. It's a low tack tape that you can buy to hold down paper or whatever and peel it off and then reuse it, peel it off, reuse it several times. So I figured, hey, why not? You know, that's as long as it's low tack, it'll work wonderfully. And, and as you can see, it, it'll do just fine here. And I'm using it to clean up the highlights and everything. And you can use your stylus along with that and uh, really get in the small areas and get those details down.
Okay, it's the next day. Um, I had to take a breather and uh, left it for the next day, so here we are. And it's starting to look pretty good there. You know, I'm getting a little light on the subject here. I'm not actually using the magnifying glass. I'm just trying to get some light on the subject. And I'm getting set up here, so why don't we skip right to it. Okay, I got my Primo Elite soft charcoal pencil number 5000 and uh, doing a little eyelash action here why not I got to put a little bit of point on it so I'm doing that on a sandpaper pad here I uh, put a little point on my charcoal pencil because I, I, I need the hairs to be very very thin and fine in certain areas so I'll do that a couple of times anytime that the pencil starts to get dull on the tip If you watch my other drawing videos, you'll you'll note that I often just jump from one area to another even though I may not even be done with a certain area and that is because otherwise I lose interest uh, I have a very short uh, interest span for for most things and so here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going ahead and uh, drawing in some of the stray hairs that are on the uh, that go across the eye and so forth you know, and I know that some of these are going to get washed out when I start to blend in the face, but there'll be a little bit of a trace of it, and uh, it'll, it'll likely even add to the realism when I go and fill it back in again. So it's just something that I wanted to do here real briefly before I went back on the eyeballs, because otherwise I, I just go crazy. What can I say? Okay, now I'm taking my Mono Zero eraser uh, pen here and just because I, I see that I need to kind of widen out the upper eyelid just a tad in certain areas and, and so I'll push it out and then I'll need to add more dark materials a little higher up and, until I can get the shape that I'm looking for.
Now standing back from it, I can see that the angle of the upper eyelid is a little steeper than it needs to be. So I'm going to be making adjustments here and there to try to get that eyelid lifted to match more of the original. Sure, I can get away with leaving it the way it is. Nobody would be the wiser unless they were right next to the original photo. But I don't roll that way, peeps. So I'm going to keep on messing with this thing until I feel that I've got that angle just about right. But for now, this is going to have to do it. I'm exhausted. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, conclude this video. And, uh, you know, I welcome you back to my next one after this, where we will continue on this portrait. Thanks for watching.